13.8 billion years ago, the universe was the size of a peach. At some point, that peach exploded for no particular reason. Stars formed, fish got up and started walking about, someone made the first ever dildo, and then 25,000 years later, the first wheel. Indeed, we know an awful lot about the beginning of our universe and species, but there's one deeply concerning question that remains unanswered. Are we alone down here? What's going on up there above the clouds in the distant horizons of space? Are aliens real? Probably. So we think there's good reasons to believe that there is life beyond the Earth, extraterrestrial life, alien life. There's a lot of features of our home world, of, of Earth, that seem to make it you know, perfect, ideal, for life to have got started and then persist on its surface. And so it's these features of habitability that we're looking for on other places as well, maybe Mars, Europa in our solar system, or if we detect a planet orbiting another star in our galaxy, an extrasolar planet, it's these Earth-like features that we'd be most excited about. There's a lot of things we take for granted here on Earth. Water, plants, kebabs, but all three of these crucial delicacies require strict ecological conditions, a perfect combination of carbon, energy, and luck. Even a place as desolate as Birmingham is a life-sustaining gold mine. So the ecological conditions for life are extremely rare. But then again, the universe is massive, like really, really big. Let's put it this way. The sun is a million times the size of the Earth. It only looks small because it's 93 million miles away. This is all inside our solar system, which is one of tens of billions in the Milky Way galaxy. And yes, that galaxy is one of 125 billion more just in the part of the potentially infinite universe we can see. To try to wrap your head around it, imagine something massive and now multiply that by the biggest number you can think of. Done? Yeah. Well done, idiot. It's bigger. So surely somewhere in the big tangled mess of space, there's at least one or two little green men milling about doing their thing. Within our solar system, scientists are definitely more focused on looking for previous signs of life or, you know, that push very simple life that exists today. Now, as an astrobiologist, I think the possibility of simple life is, is very high, but I'm not convinced there's any evidence for intelligent life um, or an alien civilization in our galaxy. We, we just see no sign that it might be there. Now, as much as I'd like to believe an actual scientist, that doesn't quite line up with what I heard from Derek from Kent, a self-professed UFO sighter. Suddenly it became not a joke because out of nowhere, it wasn't just one light going across. That one light stopped and then there were suddenly about five or six lights flashing in lots of different places. Almost certainly aliens then. I mean, Look, look, what do you think aliens might look like if you could see them, you know, outside the ship? So I imagine that an alien would look and and experience uh, its world more like an octopus or a cephalopod than uh, some sort of human entity. So they couldn't have seen any form. They could even be gaseous. No little green men then, probably. No little green men, more definitely like, no little More men. like an octopus. Yeah, more, yeah, or more like an octopus or more like something that we just can't get our heads around, like a gas. Now, if this is true, Derek from Kent may be responsible for humanity's biggest scientific discovery to date. I say, give the man a Nobel Prize. The question of alien life really comes down to a paradox. This paradox was first hypothesized in 1950 by physicist Enrico Fermi. If estimates for the existence of alien life are high, how come we haven't found them? Solutions to this theory range from bizarre to unsettling to just a bit sad. Perhaps intelligent life is so rare it's practically non-existent. Perhaps the vast size of the universe prevents different species from meeting one another. Or perhaps intelligent life is destined to destroy itself before ever colonizing space. Imagine that. On the other hand, the zoo hypothesis explores the idea that aliens are aware of us, but keeping their distance and allowing us to evolve naturally. Which I find unlikely, because how could aliens watch us create this and not do anything about it? Negligence. The search for life and the deeper search for intelligent life is destined to continue for a long time, and it's impossible to say whether aliens exist or not with any degree of certainty. But from everything we've discovered so far, it looks like the answer is, yeah, probably, at least, Derek thinks so. The common idea is that an alien is sticking its bare finger up your ass. And, and that's, that's not entirely true, but they may have some sort of utensil 